Hi everybody! Before we get into this video, let's take a moment to question our lives and how we got to this point. Awesome! Now that that's done, don't you feel a little bit better? And did you know that Billy Ray Cyrus is a Marvel superhero? If you don't believe me, come check this out. That's right. The date is January 1st, 1995. Billy Ray Cyrus is yoked and we're going on an adventure. So strap yourselves in for the aptly titled Billy Ray Cyrus by Marvel Comics and written by Paul S. Newman. Now there's an irony here and I am not going to explain it to you, but comment down below if you picked up on that. Now, Billy Ray Cyrus begins with the Fabio-esque Adonis that is Cyrus riding his majestic steed in the woods and not too far nearby are two kids, Gary and Karen, who are checking out an old abandoned fort they believe is haunted. Gary comes across what he believes is a ghost, but Karen is, well, suitably named and is having absolutely none of it. All this bickering leads Billy Ray Cyrus straight to them, and he nearly tramples them to death with his horse. Now, upon meeting B. Ray himself, Karen does what any self-respecting woman would do and dumps Gary. This is just the logical reaction to seeing Billy Ray Cyrus riding a majestic steed in the woods. There is absolutely nothing you could have done to stop it. It's what every man fears at night before he goes to sleep. I mean, just look at that hair. Now, B. Ray then decides to give the kids a history lesson about the fort. Turns out there was an epic battle between the native population and American settlers here in the past. Now, after the history lesson, B. Ray decides to invite the kids to the show he's performing that night before riding off on his majestic steed into the sunset. That night at the concert, Billy Ray is just kicking butt on stage, and after the show, B. Ray, B. Ray's agent invites the kids backstage so that they can talk about the ghosts from earlier with Billy Ray himself. However, a couple of no good nosy journalists overhear this and decide to investigate this for themselves. Backstage, the kid enters Billy Ray's dressing room and, well, uh, <laughs> did it just get a little hot in here? Billy Ray tells the kids to get changed into these frontiersman outfits. He just happens to have these in his dressing room. Now, it turns out that B. Ray wants to take the kids camping at the fort so they can go look for the ghosts. And it's okay, because he's already called their parents. Consent is important. The next afternoon, B. Ray and the kids, along with his agent, head out into the wilderness on their camping trip. And oh my god, did he give Gary a rifle? Hot on the trail are the journalists from the concert, who stop for a break so that they can eat honey bars. Billy Ray and the Funky Bunch have now arrived at the fort, but they're not alone. There's a bunch of Native Americans also heading to the fort so that they can prank Billy Ray Cyrus. That night, the Indians eat some Chinese food, and the journalists are attacked by a bear who wants to eat their honey bars. The Native Americans then launch an all-out assault at Billy Ray, firing real arrows and firing bullets at them. But it's okay, it's just a prank, bro. Billy Ray Cyrus then surrenders the fort to the Native Americans, and all is well again. The Indians are thrilled that they met the one and only Billy Ray Cyrus. And that's where this one ends, but don't get up yet. This was a two-part series, and you'll never guess where we're going next. Nashville. So this time, Billy Ray is smashing out some achy breaky heart, and the crowd is loving it. The two kids in the crowd, who look suspiciously like Gary and Karen, but are not Gary and Karen, really want his autograph, and you can't blame them. Now, Billy Ray and crew are on a tight schedule, so they jet off into their bus and head to Nashville for their next show. On the way, the band decide to pull over for some gas where they're interrupted by this old dude running the pumps. The old dude tells Billy Ray that he is psychic and that there are two kids stowed away on the bus. And what do you know? He's right. And Billy Ray calls the kids' parents. However, the old man tells Billy Ray to keep the kids on board. Apparently, they're going to save him later. 
B-Ray and the gang finally arrive in Nashville the next day, where they're met by the locals who are very eager to get themselves a slice of that Billy Ray pie, if you know what I'm saying. Now, Billy Ray and the gang get VIP treatment, so much so that they get to meet the king of Nashville himself, who compliments Billy Ray's ability to slay the dragon. What a cool guy! Billy Ray then misunderstands what the King of Nashville implied with his hip lingo and gets everyone locked up in prison. Turns out the King really wants to see Billy Ray perform. Moments later, back in their hotel room, Billy Ray Cyrus gets challenged to a duel by a guy with a moustache. I'd like to think he's jealous of Billy Ray's hair, but I could be wrong. There's a lot of things to be jealous of. Now during the duel, B Ray decides to strip out of his armour and not only wins the duel, but also the people of Nashville's heart. So much, in fact, that he's knighted by the king himself. The king then tells Billy Ray that the rest of the band will be free to go once he slays the dragon. At this point, Billy Ray is attacked by a groupie who throws herself upon him, but B. Ray knows better than that, and explains to this thought, this miscreant, that he is a married man. Be gone! The thought then blackmails Billy Ray, telling him that she knows where he can slay the dragon, but won't tell him unless he performs for her. So left with no other option, Billy Ray performs one of his hit songs to her, until someone throws a rock at him. Billy Ray and the groupie then make a getaway back to the tour bus, but not before they're attacked by the King of Nashville's sworn enemies. I mean, Nashville's just a wild place, everyone. The King of Nashville's sworn enemies besieged his castle, giving me one of my favourite comic panels ever, by the way. Check this out. <laughs> it's so good. Billy Ray then decides that the best thing to do right now is to put on a laser show. Billy Ray starts shooting lasers all over the place, and the bad guys retreat. You'd think the kind of Nashville, like the King of Nashville, he would be happy about all this. But he wasn't. Dragons are a big problem, and he still needs someone to slay him. So, Billy and his crew, and the groupie, head into the mountains to slay the dragon, but Billy Ray, being the son of Zeus himself, decides to head in unarmed. Turns out there is no dragon, though. It's just a hot spring. So Billy Ray gets a fire extinguisher, and turns it into a cold spring. The king is so impressed with Billy Ray's performance that he makes him the kingdom's magician and forces him to stay to perform magic in Nashville. Now, out of ideas and the band moping around, one of the roadies reminds Billy that the old man from the gas station said that the kids were supposed to save them. So Billy then asks for the kids' help, and one of them reveals that, according to their fancy watch, there is a meteor shower tonight. Billy Ray Cyrus then kisses a miner and runs off to meet with the king. B. Ray the Grey tells the king that he's going to make the stars rain upon them tonight and uses a meteor shower as the perfect distraction to get the heck out of Nashville. The crew end up back at the gas station where the children's parents are waiting to pick up their children. The parents thank Billy Ray and then we get the single greatest moment in all of comic book history. The boy asks Sir Cyrus himself for an autograph and Billy Ray tells us Turn the page, and you've got it. This message is directed at us. He breaks the fourth wall, and we, the reader, must now turn the page. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. I can never top this moment in my life, ever. For the rest of my life, no matter how hard I try, I'll always know that this moment right here exists. And what an incredible journey we have just been on. And thank you for coming on it with me. If you liked this story, and let's be real, why wouldn't you? Then don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And tell me what you think of the ninth Avenger, Billy Ray Cyrus, down in the comments. And I will see you on the next page. <laughs> oh God. <laughs>